Hi, my name is Michael with Iconasys. Today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video communicating our new LumiCube 360 photography light box. Uh, I won't dive into the specifics of this light box much. We have additional videos that kind of will walk through uh, the lighting itself and kind of the features and the specs. Um, but uh, just a quick dive in here. Um, LED lighting studio. Just open up with the built-in photography turntable. Probably a little bit hard to see. Uh, probably looks a bit overexposed from the uh, from the camera there. Let me turn off a couple lights here. Um, dimmable LED, also color adjustable LED. As you can see here, we can start to adjust the color. Um, very high quality lighting rated at 97 uh, CRI. Uh, we've got it connected via USB to the uh, to our computer, as well as our cameras connected via USB to our computer, and everything's going to be controlled. Uh, via our Shutterstream 360 product photography plus video software. So um, we're going to do a demonstration shooting a bracelet today and we will go ahead and place that inside the studio and we'll turn our attention over to the software where I'll be able to communicate uh, kind of the software features, functionality and the overall workflow. All right, so what we're seeing here is a real-time preview of what our camera sees. Of course, it looks a little bit dark. Um, that actually has built-in, uh, camera's built-in uh, exposure simulation. So, um, obviously, what I would do is adjust the lighting and or the camera settings to start to optimize my camera settings for the lighting environment to achieve consistent exposure. The next thing we're going to see is it is extremely up close. Um, I'm working with a macro lens, so I've got to move my camera back quite far. I probably should have done this before starting the video, but anyways, that's kind of communicating the benefit of our live view here. So it looks pretty good there. Let's just do it about there. And uh, obviously it's out of focus. Um, I can twist my lens left and right to achieve a desired focal point. The other option would be to adjust focal point through mouse click so you can see it looks a little bit blurry there um, that's I just made an adjustment to my um, driving the lens the actual focal point so I'll bring it back here as we can see it all looks pretty good there um, so let's turn our attention back over to the light box here um, what we're gonna do is just optimize our lighting for our camera settings for or sorry the lighting for the object that we're shooting first and foremost and you probably don't see too much here but I'm gonna close the doors we want to retain as much light inside as possible also help to kind of control the reflection so I'll close the two front doors there um, although we see black on either side of the live view frame it's not gonna cause an issue because we will pre-crop our subject before we capture it um, the next thing we can do is start to adjust our um, lighting inside the studio so you're gonna see um, this is me adjusting our top left light and or our top right light and we want to find kind of optimal settings. And again, this is the power of live view. Seeing how it's going to look before we capture. I just make a small adjustment here and I want to just add a little bit more of the neutral light to slightly adjust the color temperature. That should be good there. And um, overall, that looks quite good with our lighting and our camera settings for our lighting environment. Again, our focal point is good too. And then what we want to do when we're ready to capture an image is enable our crop marker. And we're going to say only take a picture of what's inside this rectangle I just defined. And I will hit my snap button. And as we can see, a very good quality image captured in just a second. When I hit live view again, it retains everything. Um, so now what I want to do is if I want to adjust my object, I will just make a slight adjustment. And maybe it's just a few different angles that I want to show. Um, looks pretty good there. Let me just close that front door. And the other option is you can actually shoot with uh, autofocus on your camera. Um, autofocus is going to work well when shooting kind of larger type objects. Autofocus can have a hard time when you're shooting macro photography, you know, much smaller objects. So, all right. Um, and maybe it's just three kind of standard images that we want to shoot. Just showing, maybe one showing the back there. All right. Looks good there. Let me just close that again, and I will hit snap. So there's our three images that we just captured. One, two, three. Uh, it's retained our crop from shot to shot. Our lighting is being consistent. Our uh, camera settings have been consistent. Uh, so we've got three pretty consistent images here uh, that would be ready to go for, say, our web or for Amazon or, you know, whatever our 
channel is that we need these high quality images for. Uh, now before outputting these images, just to communicate, I would like to walk into the editing area. There is a very powerful image editing suite with inside of Shutterstream that allows for color correction, um, adjusting backgrounds, uh, enhancing image quality. Um, you know, a lot of the standardized imaging, image editing features that are required. And the nice thing about these editing features is you can make uh, a change to one image and apply it to a set of images. So whether it's a set of still images or 360 product photography, it is very efficient. So we'll walk through. First and foremost, we see I'm going to inspect this image with this RGB color picker tool. You can see we are not quite at pure white. Um, we're getting close. Um, what we can do is say we want to use our white point here and we'll go and select a white point and that's going to adjust everything in our image from that grayish background to a white background. Um, we could have done that through our level, levels tool as well, as you can see here, making some adjustments. Um, and we're going to add a little bit of contrast back in here. And that all looks quite good there. Um, and probably our last step will be to maybe increase our sharpness. Um, so we'll just enhance our image quality a bit there. And once that looks good to go, again, because nothing changed from image one, two, or three, I can hit apply to all and put trust that this batch image editing will work great for all our images. So as we can see there, image one, two, and three, high quality results, pure white background. Now, if we needed to go ahead and maybe put them on a, uh, you know, a transparent background and output as PNG or TIFF, we can do that. We've got a lot more features inside of here, like our... Uh, background removal tool and actually let me just show you this here um, actually I will communicate our magic wand tool so I'm just gonna select a pixel there and we're probably gonna see um, actually let's have it uh, constrain selection and we're gonna see here let me just get and adjust my settings a bit threshold probably up a little higher edge sensitivity down and I won't dive into this stuff too much but we can see there a little preview of what's kinda going on um, let me crank my threshold down and all right I'm gonna hit apply to all and we're gonna see what happens here um, so instead of our white background maybe we want to put this on a different color background we just hit close there's image one two and three and pardon me what I should have done inside of here was unconstrained selection now let me hit apply to all again and it'll take out the part in the middle of the actual subject there so um, again, image one, two, and three, high quality results, uh, transparent backgrounds, which can be put on any color background if required. Now, to output these, you give it a name, maybe it's a SKU number, you can barcode scan inside of here. You can do some resizing if you want, maybe it's, you want all your images for your website at a thousand pixels wide. Um, it's gonna battery name, battery size, you can choose your image format output, um, JPEG, PNG, RAW, or TIFF, uh, TIFF being original there image resolution, you can watermark, FTP, a lot of different output functionality. I won't dive into these too much. I'll just hit OK. And we're on to shooting our next product. So that's kind of uh, the uh, still imaging functionality. I'll take this one step further just to communicate a couple cool things inside of the software. Um, pardon me, not inside of the software, a couple cool things within our studio. Um, maybe if you're using it for jewelry photography and you have maybe some necklaces and other type items, you're gonna see what I have here is a necklace hanging kit. Uh, we do sell these as accessories um, so that can be purchased with the studio, um, again, as an optional upgrade. Um, and basically how this works is you just very easily, you drape your object over the hanging kit and just looking at it there we're just going to try to get it to lay kind of consistent looks good there and all we're going to do is place it inside the studio and it's going to connect via magnet to the top so as you can see inside of here there is our hanging necklace and let me just position it a little bit better stop it from shaking now what we're going to do is again readjust our camera something like that looks pretty good and again probably not the best lens to be using for this example um, and looks good there I'm not even gonna crop this and I'll just hit my snap 
and you're going to see within a second or so there's our image and that's actually instantly on a pure white background um, so it's great for hanging objects as well as we do have another um, another accessory here this is our earring hanging kit um, basically our hoop earrings will connect through and hang down and this is going to work in the exact same manner um, place and then hang our subject and I'm just going to stop these from moving and let me just adjust my camera again looks pretty good there or one ear is not really playing nice as far as the position of it but let's just go ahead and we'll just quickly you know what I'll just we'll try that we'll see if it's oh we missed it obviously but you get the idea um, there we go that's a bit better there it's kind of moving a bit but uh, there you go something like that um, so high quality results um, very fast very efficiently uh, again it's our lumi cube 360 photography light box can be used for still imaging automation as well as 360 imaging automation and 360 product videos uh, includes our shutter stream 360 plus video software and the company is iconesis if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out thank you